So want greatness, pray, develop strong Christian community in your life. Four, the sacraments. Stay close to the sacraments. You will not get very far on a journey without fuel. The sacraments are our fuel. Mass, go every Sunday. Go more often than that if you can, man. I had two choices growing up. You get up and go to Mass, or you're grounded for a week, and you get up and go to Mass anyway. Either way, I got up and went to Mass. You see, this isn't like an optional thing. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. It was a command. And it's in the Ten Commandments to keep Sunday holy. He didn't give us this as a commandment to give us another to-do. He gave it to us as a commandment because he knew we would need this spiritual food to live life to the full. And he wants what's best for us. And stay close to the sacrament of confession. It's the bounce that counts. Get up when you fall down. And if yesterday is ever holding you back, go get rid of it in the sacrament of confession. My son Joey loves asking me questions about when I was seven because he wants to be like me when he's 37, wants to make sure he's on the right track. So, you know, he's like, Dad, was your favorite color blue? I'm like, yeah. He's like, awesome. I'm like, Dad, would you play ninjas when you were seven? I'm like, yeah, of course I am one. He's like, yes. And one day he's like, Dad, how do you remember when you were seven? I don't know, Joey, how do you remember yesterday? And he goes, I don't remember yesterday. <laughs> you got an amazing ability to forget about yesterday. God won that ability for you to forget about yesterday on the cross. And as much as he loves you singing your songs of praise to him and going to religious ed classes and going to youth group and stuff like that, you know, more than all that, he loves when you give him your worst sin and confession because he died so you could be free to that. And you know, if, if there's something else holding you down from yesterday, maybe not something you did, but something someone did to you, you know, some way you feel messed up inside, please talk to somebody about that. Don't ever be afraid to deal with your wounds in your life because God wants you to live life to the full. And you got to move on from yesterday to do that. So one, you got to want greatness. Two, you got to pray. Three, community life. Four, stay close to the sacraments. Five, commit to a life of mission. God is calling you on a mission. Two thirds of God's name is go. You know, the whole missionary aspect of the Christian life, that's not just for the Pope or priests or, or religious. And it's not just for for missionaries or full-time professional youth ministers. It's for everybody. It's a mandatory part of living out the Christian faith. The whole word mass, it takes its meaning from the last words of mass when it used to be said in Latin, ite misa est, sent. It's the word a Roman commander would use when he sends his army out on a mission because it connotes mission. You're sent for a purpose. See, because God isn't going to give you that much grace so you can keep it to yourself. He gives you that grace so he can send you to be his hands and feet in a world that so badly needs the light of Jesus Christ and the mouthpiece of Jesus Christ and, the, and just loving and serving and leading others back to him. Because a lot of times your friends need you to talk to them about the faith if they're ruining their lives, doing stupid stuff, wandering off into darkness. One of my favorite saints who lived out mission, who lived for others, Father Vincent Cappadano, he's a saint in the making. His cause for canonization has been open in the Catholic Church. So God willing, he'll be a saint soon. He was a Marine chaplain during the Vietnam War. His Marines loved him because he was always right there with them on the front lines, no matter how bad things got. Well, one day this battle broke out called Operation Swift. 250 Marines found themselves completely surrounded by 2,500 North Vietnamese Army. The guys who survived that day, they said they didn't even know where to shoot back because artillery was flying in at them in every direction. Another guy who survived said it sounded like Niagara Falls. If you've ever been on a boat near the falls, you could barely hear anything. It's just this rumbling sound. And right in the midst of that chaos, Father Vincent Capadano. So this, this one guy, he, he was hit with shrapnel. He was on the ground bleeding, terrified, thought he was going to die. He remembers when Father Capadano got up to him, this bubble of peace descended on him. It was total silence. And he said, you'll be all right, Marine. God is with us. Someone will get you out. Another guy I had the honor of talking to him, he was the communications guy that day. He had 70 pounds of gear in his back. Everything started to explode around him. He thought, this is it, I'm going to die. He felt a hand on his shoulder. That hand picked him up, threw him through the air into a ditch, saved his life. He looked up at his Father Cappadano. He said, Father, take my gas mask. Father Cappadano turned it down. He said, no, 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 you'll need it more than me. He gave his life that day. He was running to minister to a medic that had been shot, and he was shot 27 times in the back. The USS Cappadano was named after him. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor after his death. It's the highest honor you can get in the military. His name's in the Vietnam War Memorial. The only way to see it is to kneel. The way he died, that's the way Christians are called to live their everyday life. 
not for themselves but for others. We have enough people in this world living for themselves. We have enough people in this world who want to be the next pop icon that everybody notices and loves and everybody follows on Twitter and Facebook or whatever it is. We don't need the next rock star. We need, we need the next father, Vincent Cappadano. You gotta be that person. You see, you gotta be that person in your daily life. You see, God isn't calling me to go into your cafeteria and spread his love, but he is sending you there. He's sending you to go, to be on a mission, and to bring his love and presence and kingdom to this whole world. We have enough people in this world who are living for themselves. We don't need more of them. We need saints. So want greatness. Pray. Develop strong Christian community in your life. Stay close to the sacraments and be committed in your daily life to mission. Not waking up and saying, how's the world going to serve me today? But waking up every day and saying, God, how do you want me to love and serve the world in your name? So living out the disciplines of a disciple, man, it's not overly complex. You just got to do it. Let me encourage you right now. In these final days or weeks leading up to when you receive the sacrament of confirmation, take these disciplines of a disciple more seriously than ever. What God wants to unleash in your own life and through you in this world, the power he wants to give you to live out life to the full, it's beyond comprehension. And the more open your heart is, the more you're going to be open to receiving that life and that power. But you know what? Ultimately, the Christian life and all of human existence, it's not just about to-dos or five steps to happiness or facts you got to learn or rules you got to follow. Though all that's important. Ultimately, all this, at the center of all this, at the center of this journey of faith, it's a person who loves you very much and who wants you to make your life a response to his love so you can live life to the full.